Technic University. My fault. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll just give you a little background about um, Professor Law. So he is the Chair of Physics and the Head of the Department of Applied Physics at Hong Kong Polytechnic University. He's also the Director of the University Research Facility in Materials Characterization and Device Fabrication, and then the Associate Director of the Photonic Research Institute. Um, he's also um, a Fellow of the American Physical Society. Um, I could go on about his book <laughs> and awards, but um, look, I think his research speaks for him itself. Um, so it's my pleasure to welcome him to talk about ferroelectricity in two-dimensional heterobilayers. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. Uh, thank you, Mark, for the invitation and ho uh, hosting me uh, in uh, Monash University as well. So I'm um, an uh, opportunity to visit your lab and very impressive. I I really wish uh, our facility could be at that kind of level. <laughs> okay. And uh, and the space here is a really, uh, I really envy about it. You know, in, in Hong Kong, the space is really a, a challenge for us. But uh, I, I really hope that we could have a more collaboration in the in the near future. So uh, today I'm going to uh, talk about some of our work um, uh, in this ferroelectricity in uh, two dimensional um, material. Uh, I remember about three years ago when my student told me that he could uh, make this uh, hydro bilayer. Then my first question is, uh, what for? And we don't know what to use. Um, because uh, we have no idea about the properties. And then later on, we found that uh, it had this uh, piece of electricity. So that uh, excited us a lot. And later on, we um, there's a big topic on the further electricity on, um, on two-dimensional material as well. So we also realized that this material can also have a further electricity. And then uh, we go on to investigate, you know, to understand this material more. So this is something uh, we're going to talk about. And uh, then later on, you know, uh, you want to publish in a good journal. <laughs> Sometimes you have to demonstrate you can make some uh, reasonable devices. Okay, not only we can make this material, there are certain properties. So then the, the last part is about this uh, making the uh, ferroelectric uh, dial, okay, uh, tungsten, uh, tunneling ferroelectric dial. And um, I also want to take this opportunity to uh, highlight some of our work in our department and also in my group as well after this uh, part on the ferroelectricity. So if... Uh, I, I, I also know that uh, Mark had some uh, work uh, uh, working on this uh, piece of and uh, ferroelectricity as well. So uh, I may not need to say a lot of things about this, uh, how important this uh, piece of electricity. Okay, the piece of basically you apply a force and then you generate the electric charge or you have the electric charge to uh, have a deformation uh, on the material or the crystal. Okay, so that is uh, the piece of electric. So it's uh, common, uh, commonly used in all this instrument, even in the, uh, our watch and this ultrasound uh, electronic um, equipment. So um, uh, widely used, okay? So uh, then the uh, ferroelectricity is uh, more like uh, become a switch, okay? You can have this uh, hysteresis slope, this uh, um, um, polarization, uh, 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 P-loop uh, um, hysteresis, so that you can actually program it to a high resistance day and low resistance, uh, resistance day. So uh, basically you can make uh, like a memory type. But uh, this material, you know, have been uh, written for so long, okay? Uh, but they are not really have uh, real devices yet. I mean, for the uh, switching like a memory uh, devices, because one of the reasons is uh, silicon, they're doing so well, okay? But uh, of course, uh, for, the electric, uh, for the electric type of uh, memory device, they have an uh, advantage. 
but the material cannot uh, keep up with that. And the people will try to make it, you know, shrink it down uh, to a very thin layer for typical ferroelectric material, like uh, here I mentioned uh, PZT, all this, okay, uh, BTO. But when they become a few nanometer, the depolarization field become dominant, and then the material no longer uh, ferroelectric material, okay? So there's a lot of interest uh, looking at this uh, ferroelectric device here mentioned the field, uh, this uh, ferroelectric switching um, device. And then there are some uh, uh, field, field effect uh, type of uh, transistor type of uh, devices. People have been uh, demonstrate based on the more like a film film, a bulk type of material. So um, I, I realized that there's a very long history for the ferroelectric, okay, starting from 1912. And uh, also quite uh, surprising that time when I learned this uh, is uh, uh, Edwin Sergeinger, you know, by this Sergeinger equation quantum mechanics. Um, they actually propose, he actually proposed this uh, ferroelectricity. So after a few years, uh, it's realized from this uh, 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 cell shop type of material. So after over 100 years, okay, more than 100 years, and you can see how this uh, field has been changed, you look at all this material. So uh, people have been working a lot on the um, uh, PSSO, and then there's some other new type, BFO, okay, BFO have been uh, in intensively uh, study for quite a long time, right? And uh, for 2D, it's only about 10 years old, all right? If uh, 2014, there are some prediction, and later on people will uh, discover, um, uh, demonstrate that we can actually um, realize um, this uh, further electricity in a 2D material. So uh, one of the problem for the traditional uh, offside based BFO, PZT, all this, um, is a thickness dependent polarization, okay? So when it become a very thin, they no lo the, the ferro electricity is already disappear, no longer exists. So, so that is, is the reason why people want to look, at, look into the 2D material. And here I mentioned there's a quite a something if we can make a 2D ferroelectric uh, computing in memory, this is a big topic nowadays, neuromorphic devices. Um, um, that is also, um, uh, we are thinking to focus more on this material in this uh, aspect, okay? So that's related to uh, integration with the silicon chips, okay? And data reading, writing, you know, uh, even later on, uh, multi theoretic type of coupling. So um, there's a lot, um, if we compare to conventional and the 2D, there's uh, um, advantages. Uh, if we can make uh, 2D, uh, because most of the 2D material, um, they have uh, this high mobility and uh, low band gap semiconductor, and uh, the interface is really keen. And we can also have this uh, so-called uh, long disruptive reading compared to the bulk. And there's an uh, energy cost. We can reduce the fatigue less, you know, the speed, all this uh, look like there are lots of uh, advantages, okay? So, um, so that uh, make a lot of people try to demonstrate 2D uh, ferroelectric. Uh, so it's about 10 years ago, uh, 2014, um, the, the group um, um, demonstrated that um, MOS2, if you can make a uh, op layer, say a monolayer, third layer, then you can have this uh, piece of electricity, um, okay, in op layer. So uh, that time, because uh, when they become an op layer, they uh, block the central symmetric uh, 
So then they have this uh, um, uh, piece of electricity, okay, but in an in-plane uh, manner. So it's an in-plane um, uh, piece of electricity, okay? If you uh, thin it down to a monolayer, okay, or even the third layer, then you will uh, observe this uh, uh, piece of electricity. So basically, they deposit onto the flexible substrate, they bend it, they can actually uh, see all this uh, uh, changing with the current, okay? So this is uh, for the uh, monolayer, one layer, two layer, they don't have see anything. Third layer, a bit weaker, but they still can observe and even fifth layer. So um, that, um, um, you know, can be un understandable because uh, TMD itself is a central symmetric material, but only uh, monolayer or off-layer lumber, you can actually observe this uh, 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 piece of electricity. Uh, then later on, people also based on this uh, MOS2 um, to have this in-plane, okay? Uh, piece of electricity, okay? They don't observe any our plane. D11 is uh, talking about the in-plane, uh, four picoam per volt, okay? Uh, no our plane. And um, uh, later on, people also realize that this uh, alpha phase indium synthesis, they also have both uh, in-plane and our plane uh, piece of electricity. But that, that is not surprising because indium synthesis is a uh, well-known, is a piece of electric material. It just happened that it fitting down to a, uh, uh, probably not monolayer, maybe a few nanometer. They can observe uh, about uh, our plane, D33, about 0.34 type of uh, picoam uh, per volt. Um, then um, later on, there are some uh, theory prediction say that uh, chromium terrorite base could have a uh, quite a high um, in-plane type of uh, piece of electricity. Some even uh, captium oxide, they predict something, you know, uh, could have a much higher piece of electric coefficient. Uh, but unfortunately, this is, have not really been uh, realized experimentally, although they can, they can uh, predict from the, um, this uh, calculation. And then uh, people look into another approach, uh, this so-called, you know, to stacking um, Mori um, um, pattern, okay? When you have a stack to material together with, uh, with a triple angle, okay? Like this case for the uh, graphene, uh, bilayer graphene. So um, um, people, with the major angle, they can uh, observe this uh, superconductivity. And later on, they use a similar structure. They also can observe uh, for the bilayer uh, graphene with a triple angle. They also can observe uh, fellow electricity, okay? But at a very low temperature that time, okay? Because of the, of the setup, this device, they actually uh, demonstrate they can see this history state law. Um, then they claim that from that uh, you can observe uh, fellow electricity. And uh, this work later on, um, based on the um, PFM, um, they can see the pattern. Okay, so the pattern there are different contour, bright and dark, and then so that they 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 can find that that she is the um, fellow electric uh, polarization uh, pulling up and down, okay? So that you can see this uh, pattern based on the bone nitride, okay? They're using the bone nitride. And from graphene, bone nitride, you have a treated angle. Later on, they also use, uh, uh, this is still based on the uh, bone nitride, and basically, um, the effect for the uh, fellow electricity in this bond nitride when they stack with a uh, uh, treated angle. So uh, because of the sliding effect, 
uh, you will generate um, um, uh, polarization up or down depend on the position uh, relative to the uh, uh, B and N, okay? So then you have the, the uh, polarization up or down, okay? So uh, later on, the TMD people also demonstrate that same effect, basically almost the same group, okay? And actually different group also uh, demonstrate, but uh, based on the device space, it's not, um, uh, from the uh, scanning uh, tunneling microscope, you can see some uh, region, triangle re region, and uh, like um, 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 domain wall call pattern, you can see they have this uh, fairly electric um, um, type of uh, polarization, okay? So um, so for us, um, when my student told me uh, we can grow this uh, piece of electric, uh, well, this uh, heat turbine by layer, so basically uh, it's a one-step grow technique. Uh, we use CVD because uh, all this method just now we mentioned, you have to base on the stacking. So I, I, I know that uh, your group have a very, or your team have a very dedicated uh, uh, team to make a stacked, uh, scattered uh, type of uh, um, uh, 2D material. So um, maybe you can make it work, okay? Can make uh, something similar to people uh, um, reported. But uh, we we uh, realize that if we can make a CVD um, larger area, okay, we probably will be more um, well closer to the practical application. So it's a one step grow. So we can grow WS two and MOS two. So hit the by layer, all right. So. Um, you probably can see the law of triangle. Okay, some are more regular, some are actually not so regular, but uh, basically his uh, this a hetero bilayer. So we have um, um, like um, WS2 on the bottom and MS2 cover all this. So to form all this uh, uh, hetero bilayer, okay? All each triangle will be a uh, bilayer. So without a triangle region, it's just an MOS2, okay? So um, so that's from the Raman. So we can identify all this uh, heat uh, related to the, um, uh, without the triangle, it's just MOS2, okay? With uh, the triangle shape, that, so it's a heat ballet. And uh, then from the PL, and some other uh, characterization about the thickness and the shape, all this, okay? So we can see that uh, the size about 10 micron typically, but now we can go uh, maybe one ornamental, even two ornamental better, but it's still uh, within a uh, um, micron range, okay? And then the thickness is about uh, uh, 0.5, Point six. If the two layer together, we about one point four um, nanometer. So we know it's a hetero bilayer. So based on the uh, TM, so this is the one big triangle. So we look at from the edges, and the bottom is a WS two. The top is a MOS two. So we get closer, so that a pretty good um, um, align the uh, uh, hetero bilayer. Okay, so from the edge, we can see the MOS2 actually on top and then WS2 on the bottom. Then we use a uh, um, second harmonic generation, um, typically using um, a second harmonic generation, you can tell whether it is uh, the material breaking the central uh, symmetric, um, uh, symmetry or not. Okay, so, uh, for us, we can see there's uh, many triangles. Some are bright, some are dark. Okay, so basically we have two orientations. So uh, for the bright one, it's a three hour like. The stack, the stacking is basically zero degrees. Okay, um, because of the constructed 
interference make it bright. And then uh, we can see the dark triangle as well. So we call it the two edge like uh, because of the 60 degree or well, because of people uh, symmetry, we can, we just say 180 degrees stacking. Then you have uh, this the two edge like um, 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 triangle. But these two, whether uh, what type of st uh, stacking angle, it will not affect so much on the piezoelectricity or ferroelectricity uh, later on we'll, 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 we'll talk about. Okay, so um, it's very important that um, we can identify the stacking even from the TM, okay? So we actually carefully look at the, the dark one, the bright one, see how they they arrangement of the atom. Then we um very comfortable to say that there's two H like and three out like. Okay. So uh not only from the um from the um second harmonic generation and then later on we can use a TM to actually see the exact um, um atom orientation so that we confirm that they are three out like or two H like. Okay. So so our work is different from other is uh we make uh CVD we do not have the treated angle. Okay. Just now we mentioned if if the stacking they have a treated angle, they are more weak pattern, they can have uh fellow electricity. But for us, uh, we don't have shoot the angle, okay? So later on, we observe the piezoelectricity, ferroelectricity is nothing to do with the formation of the Mori pattern, okay? So um, because when we send our paper for review, they, the, the review always think that Nothing uh, uh, new because uh, they expect that our film also have a stricter angle. Okay, once you have stricter angle, you know, expect that you could observe ferroelectricity. But um, but our 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 claim is that we don't have strict. So basically, no stricter angle. So we have to use uh, other techniques like uh, TEM to to convince the reviewer that we don't have a straight angle from our film. And uh, another reason is uh, because of the global temperature, there's a commemorated, okay, the, the both uh, WH2 and MOS2. And the uh, lattice constant for monopolium and tungsten somehow they are almost identical, okay? So therefore, we make these two materials is a perfect match, so that we don't we do not form a straight angle when we grow the heterobilayer together. Okay, so then um we go on to have this um characterization, <clears throat> and um the first thing we discover that is uh, this heterobilayer have this uh, very strong uh piezoelectric effect uh our plane. If it, uh, just now remember uh for the indium signal material, they only about 0. 0.4, okay, 0. 0.4 pico um uh picometer per volt. Okay, that this which we coefficient. But we have about about four times, five times better, okay, compared with the indium signal. So uh um no matter whether a two H like or three R like, they uh, are having a similar level of uh, piece of electricity. Okay, the, the, the coefficient also really close, uh, about two. Okay, two pico um, uh, uh, picometer per per volt. Right then, um, later on. We uh, also uh, look at the, whether there's a piece, piece uh, fellow electricity. And then uh, they have the hysteresis loop, okay? Uh, when the DC all uh, off 
and uh, DC on, you know, there are different techniques to uh, enumerate the artifact. If you want to do this uh, photoelectricity, we need to be careful. You know, sometimes it could be due to some other things, uh, could be due to charges, okay? Uh, so therefore, there's a certain uh, procedure we need to follow, like uh, VDC or VDC on, you know, this kind of thing um, you need to uh, follow to in order to ascertain your results is, uh, is uh, intrinsically come from the uh, hito by layer. Okay, so we have all these uh, standard uh, history law, phase change, all these are uh, 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 um, confirmed that it it is a uh, photoelectric material. And there's a typical material uh, talking about uh, CIPS, this material, people also demonstrate similar things. So we, we try to compare with that. And P, uh, ZT as well. So what we observe is very, very, very similar to other people, okay? But we are on a 2D uh, hito by layer. And then we can do a, a polling, you know, some region uh, posted, some region and uh, posted positive, negative, they are different contra, uh, different color, okay, for the face. For the amplitude, we can we can uh, confirm that this is a um, piece of electric, uh, ferroelectric type of uh, uh, properties. And uh, later on, we uh, demonstrate that we use the AFM tube uh, to make the contact, and then we can pose it for positive five volt. Then uh, there's an on current, so it's a low resistance state. And if we put a negative five volt, it will become a, a high resistance state. Okay, so basically there's an on way, so maybe about thousand. Okay, so that demonstrate that we um this uh hito by layer is uh is have an intrinsic property of this uh solar electricity. Right. So uh then we have this uh uh DFT calculation to actually to confirm there's a two possible model. One is so-called a strong interaction, the yeah, other is a weak interaction model. Uh, so based on the um, um, the uh, value, we actually uh, estimate, we think that our um, um, the, the, the mechanism is more close to the weak uh, interaction uh, model to account for this uh, um, switching. Okay, um, so uh, after our paper being uh, accepted, later on um, we also want to uh, go a bit further. Um, we have to not just uh, make the tunneling uh, dial, uh, but we also want to make the transistor. So before we make a transistor, we make a firm firm. Um, there's a certain thing we need to check. Uh, it's a PE load, okay? For the wheel for electric material, you should have a PE load, okay? Polarization load. So for the polarization load, uh, there's a certain thing uh, can also verify whether your material is a wheel for the electric material is the is is a load um, direction. Okay, so have to be a uh, anti -colloid. So the direction have to be anti -colloid. So uh, for us, uh, this is a typical. Uh, let me see a P. Uh, it's a P set. Uh, oh, uh, circumium oxide. Okay, so it's a typical uh ferroelectric uh oxide. So you can see that's it. Uh, anti -colloid, uh P E load. And for us, we also have an anti uh PE load as well, okay? Based on, uh, we just put, um, transfer our heat to bilayer on the second dioxide with uh, two electro, okay? With two electro. So, um, so it means that our heat to bilayer also have uh, this in-plane uh, load as well, yeah, in-plane for electricity. Okay, not just our plane, although our measurement, the AFM, we can see uh, our plane, okay? But they also have an in-plane. 
as well. Okay. So uh, so this uh, also give us uh, more confidence to go on to uh, make this type of uh, uh, transistor. So we um, another thing we we found that actually uh, we can actually use pulses to program this uh, device in different stages. So you mean that at the different uh, high resistance stage, okay? So we can uh, have uh, 16 high resistance state or different end, uh, um, resistance state, okay? So um, with uh, different uh, pulses, okay? So um, that is very important for the uh, memory device, especially for the ferroelectric. Uh, later on, if you want to make an uh, in-memory type of uh, computing devices, you should have a uh, different level. Okay, if you can, I mean, it's not just a typical transistor, it's just on and off. You can have an in-between uh, state. So when you have an in-between state, uh, we can do an estimation, uh, you know, it can use to predict uh, um, uh, um, some uh, other model later on we will, we will talk about. Okay, so just now we talk at the PL, uh, PE low, have to be uh, anti right? But uh, once it become a transistor, it will be more complicated. It could be the loop, could be anti right? could be right? okay? So so don't, don't confuse with the loop we are talking about from the transistor or from the polarization loop, okay? So there are some report that uh, because of the coupling, okay? Um, so you make uh, this conduction mechanism and polarization really is more complicated, okay? It cannot be, um, have to be, you know, the loop have to be uh, anti chloride or uh, chloride, okay? So um, for our, uh, this is a case from this uh, work using uh, indium light. So their, their uh, loop, on the transistor is a uh, uh, core wire, okay? But some other could be anti core wire. So it depends on how 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 the content and the, and the material. Okay, so just now we mentioned about these uh, people, you know, if we can have different stages, um, you know, resistance state, you, we can use a software to, uh, to predict uh, whether we can recognize like this type of uh, hand weighting uh, character. Um, this is for the digit from zero to nine. Okay, so if we have a 16 state, so for us, uh, the prediction uh, could be 95% accurate. Okay, we, we can use our device at this uh, kind of uh, recognition. So we can we can um say up to about ninety six uh, percent accurate depend on the number of training we can actually uh, provide. So uh so we really you know this is based on simulation. If we have a sixteen uh, stage, we can we can actually do that kind of thing. So but of course uh, we need to make a way <laughs> of uh, sixteen uh, divide or even uh, more in order to do a much more complicated thing. So the next thing is uh, we need to make the heater by layer much larger, okay? Uh, while 100 micron, we can we can make a sufficient device, okay? But uh, we, we hope that we can develop some other uh, better than it to, to make it uh, larger, okay? So so this is uh, the mainly um, the work uh, based on this uh, paper Okay, we published in uh, Science La uh, two years ago, and uh, we try to do a bit more. Okay, uh, hope that maybe this uh, center um, emphasize about low energy electronic. So I think uh, ferroelectric is one of the um, um, device. Okay, fit in your uh, focus in this uh, center as well. Okay, so uh, I also want to take this opportunity to uh, mention some of our work, uh, some of the work in our uh, department and some of my colleagues, uh, we collaborate quite uh, actively. Um, so this is the work about we extended 
um, not just the hydro bilayer. So we have another way to actually extend much more um, TMD material can have this uh, piece of ferroelectric uh, property. So this is the talk we're going to talk about next Tuesday in this uh, MMC. So uh, I, 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 will, I will not say <laughs> too much. So basically the idea is uh, creating the defect uh, on the structure. Then they break the immersion uh, symmetry. Then we can have a uh, uh, piece of electric property or federal electric property in certain type of uh, TMD, okay? Which are originally, if they are stoichiometric type, they, 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 they should not have a uh, piece of electricity. But uh, if we introduce this called DFAT, they could become a uh, piece of electricity, okay? Right, um, another work is quite an interesting uh, uh, work because of the indium sinunai. So only alpha phase indium sinunai uh, will have the uh, this field of electricity. But when you try to grow it, most of the case, uh, you can get a beta and beta uh, high phase type of uh, indium sinunai. So uh, they are not uh, thermal electric, okay? So this work we have, we um, we do some kind of uh, uh, structure investigation. We actually found that um, the beta phase indium sinunai, if we transfer it onto flexible substrate, okay? The phase from B pi will change it to alpha phase. Okay, when it become alpha phase, we can have photo electricity. Okay, so so this is a quite an interesting way that uh, the phase can change because of uh, changing in the flexible uh, substrate. So there are some explanation on this uh, work. Okay, if if, if you are interested, we can um, you can just let me know. Maybe we can uh, talk about it later on. And then uh, I think only last month, we have this uh, paper um, looking at the um, uh, plasticity. So basically, um, the, this uh, TMD material can have uh, quite a high uh, plasticity, okay? So we, we try to explain um, uh, it, why we they can have such a high uh, plasticity is uh, due to the, the mechanism, okay? When they try to uh, fetcher or blinking so that they can they can make it look like it's a very, very soft, okay, per material. And um, so my group also uh, looking at the um, um, using TMD at uh, substrate because TMD somehow it uh, when we study this uh, lithium sulfide battery, um, the liquid sulfur can be formed on the surface of this uh, TMD. Okay, uh, after treatment. So uh, if we can maintain a longer this uh, liquid sulfur on the surface, it will help on the uh, capacity of the lithium sulfide battery, especially uh, at low temperature, okay? At low temperature, um, sometimes the sulfur becomes solid, okay? I mean, if the, if the solid sulfur, the, the transport will not be good. Okay, so you make the capacity of this will um, decrease. But you can still maintain a um, uh, liquid sulfur on the surface. So we can make this uh, battery work at a uh, low temperature. Okay, still function uh, pretty well. So um, so there's some uh, work on, on that as well. And then um, later on, we expanded not just um, on uh, TMD, can be on a uh, type of uh, graphene uh, uh, related uh, uh, surface. And not only can have a uh, low temperature, we can have a fast charging. 
as well. Okay, so uh, this is uh, another um, another work we based on the two D material, and um, um, we also have a work to try to make a uh, large area back forces. Uh, a couple of years, uh, maybe maybe uh, this one published in two two one or or two, and um, so we can use a pulse laser technique to make a uh, pretty large uh back forces. Then um we um we can we can control the layer uh pretty good as well. So uh this also um um some of the we we make use of the post laser deposition technique to grow some type of material larger um uh, area. And uh, also have a different uh, interest in the CO two reduction. So uh we also uh talking with some other. Um, department in the Monash University. Hopefully, we can we can actually uh, do some more in the en energy related uh, work as well. Okay, so um, just uh, want to mention that we we're going to have a conference in uh, Hong Kong uh, in this uh, coming uh, May. So uh, this this conference is the second time uh, uh, hosted. The first one uh, last year in Cambridge uh, is um, first uh, proposed by uh, Professor Chawala. So this uh, conference is only by invitation. Okay, we have uh, all over uh, maybe one hundred and twenty invited speakers already. About nine uh, panel talk. Okay, so you can you can check the website. So we also welcome for uh research student and postdoc to submit poster. Okay, if you are interested, so just let me know. <laughs> okay, or or you can you can welcome to uh. So if uh, some other staff member you are interested, let me know. I will send you the invitation. So uh, Mark is already <laughs> accepted our invitation to come for this uh, conference as well. Okay, uh, so I want to acknowledge a lot of people. Uh, they did most of the work. Uh, so for the uh, work I talk about today, uh, Lucas uh, is uh, the one doing uh, all this uh, interesting work. So he is a uh, German, okay? So he's in, in my group. So uh, this is, uh, my group is not uh, very big, about 10 members nowadays, okay? So uh, just try to do um, some interesting work uh, together. So uh, for that, I thank you for your attention. I think that's all for, for my talk. Thank you. Any questions? <laughs> I've got a question on the indium selenide. Like when you put it on this flexible strong string, how does it change from like the different phase? Because it's an alpha phase out of plane and then beta prime in plane. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, good question. I well, it somehow is a is an orientation. One that I mean the surface if they're not fat. Somehow it can induce the string onto the this phase, and then one we have the string, they change the phase. And, and how much strain or, or flexing do you need to do on the flexible? Uh, it's not that much. It's not that much. But uh, con quantitatively, I I'm I'm not quite sure about that. So I can I can, you can refer to this paper on that. <laughs> So I was just curious about the mechanism for the ferroelectricity in the in your bilayers because right. you mentioned some of the other material systems yeah. you introduced the defect. Is it the same in the bilayers? So in our bilayer, it's not quite the same um, because uh, mainly the mechanism people believe because there's no direct observation yet. It's uh, by sliding. So the top and bottom layer, they actually, uh, once you apply the fill, it will move to say a certain unit cell. So that 
create our plain uh, polarization. So, uh, so we believe our, our, our case also like that, okay? And uh, it, even for the um, uh, create, uh, making defect, the mechanism is, uh, could be similar as well if, if they're thin enough. Because if they're so thin, is uh, the traditional one by displacement is not possible. So they have to think of some other explanation. How come they can still have a uh, fellow electricity only about two uh, atomic layer or few atomic layer? So uh, most of the people just believe <laughs> due to the sliding effect. Uh, can I ask a question, Professor Long? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, just a second, Dong Chen. Um, oh, sorry. Yeah. Just how much actually changes? So how much goes to the alpha phase? Is it the entire film, or is it the only um, certain areas? Um, for this work, is the uh, look like the um, uh, locally. Okay, locally, it it will change. The phase, as far as uh, the string at that uh, region, then they can change the face. Match like the, the roughness of the... Yeah, that's why, that's why, that's why, that's why, that's um, why. Gong Chen? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, very nice talk, Professor Lau, and uh, uh, very nice to see you again virtually. So, uh, yeah, my question is about the bilayer electricity and you mentioned it's out of plane. So yes. uh, how do you... Confirm is out of playing is simply because um the actual field you have applied. Uh, yeah. Uh, from the from the PFM uh measurement, we can confirm is uh, our plane. Yeah, okay. because there are different setup we can do for the in plane and our plane. So uh, for the setup we use is uh we can detect it from the our plane. So we know it's our plane. Okay. 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 Thank you. What is the mechanism of piezoelectricity in 2H MOS2 uh, WS2 hetero bilayers? So, like, what is the mechanism behind it? Right. It's uh, it, it probably the same one we talk about. It's a, uh, you know, the, um, well, for the piezoelectric. Uh, will be easier because it just break the central symmetric. Then you will create this uh, piece of electric. But for for the photo electric, you have to have some uh, movement in order to generate the polarization. So for the so I I mean the simple uh answer is uh because the central symmetric is being uh, broken. When you were talking and, and showing the, the TEM and saying that there's no twist angle, mm. but don't you have some lattice mismatch between the, the two TMDs, which would create a moray super lattice anyway? It's just quite small. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, um, but just happened that molybdenum and tungsten, the lattice constant, almost identical. So they make this uh, lattice means match is really unlikely to happen. And uh, because we also had, uh, when we, we one step grow, so we have about, you know, we relative high temperature about 700 degrees. So basically they commemorate. So there are no really uh, uh, small trigger angle. Yeah, this is a hard question, you know, when the reviewer asks us. <laughs> So we have to repeat the the uh, TM measurement to just prove that you know we just can't see it. And what substrates can you grow them? Uh, just, just silicon, silicon dioxide. Would you do it on like just dope silicon without the oxide or? Does yeah, it... can but uh uh we actually try different uh substrate. It just just depend on the crystal quality you can get. But so far, I think on silicon are uh, pretty good. Yeah. Um, so, but on some other substrate, we can also grow it. But sometimes the quality is difficult 
yeah to be controlled yeah we want we want to make it larger area so that later on we can make uh, you know a device much larger or a way of device oh. <laughs> Um, in relation to knowing which polarization state it is in, DFT calculations have been used in some systems to show the most stable polarization state, the difference sliding stacking arrangements. Um, Michelle, did you have any actual question <laughs> related to that, or was that more just an a comment observation? Yeah, sorry, that was more just an observation, I think, it was uh, partly in response to, to John Chen's uh, question. Oh, uh, sure. Okay, Thanks. thank you. Um, any other questions uh, in person or over Zoom? No? Okay. Well, um, okay. Once again, just thank our <laughs> Professor Law for the one. Thank you.